What's up, you guys? Brandon Seriously. is like not focused, so I just started the video. Who else is new? And he's over here going, That's so basic. So basic. <laughs> All right, guys, happy Friday. Oh my god, that's so basic. Uh, yep, that's how <laughs> we're feeling. Is anybody else feeling that in quarantine? Going a little stir crazy? Uh, the snow did not help our household at all in wanting to get out. So, um, we want to come to you early again today. So yesterday we were talking about what's going on, if you're struggling and if your priorities have changed. <clears throat> and I did a lot of thrusters and double unders and apparently I still have Fran Lung. Um, so we wanted to build on that today as we talk about movement and, and what else uh, we can do with movement and kind of what's going on. But ideally, or ultimately, we see a lot of people right now that don't trust themselves. Hello, Nate! We can trust that you'll be on every day and we appreciate that. So we want to give you guys some um, actual action on how you can start to build trust with yourself when in the past maybe you haven't been able to trust yourself. Um, so, I mean, honestly, you guys, I think this is what we see for most people that probably walk through our doors initially on there is we need a system, we need a plan, we need something because we haven't been able to trust ourselves, right? Like, honestly, the way I like to look at it, it's kind of like that friend that you say your best friends and then all of a sudden you are moving and then you're like, hey, you mind helping me out? Like, oh, I got, I got this thing, you know, I, I, I got this other thing. It's like, you've never had a thing to do on Saturday your whole life. Now, all of a sudden I need your help and you're no longer there. Right? Like we kind of do that for ourselves, Right. And we, we constantly promise or tell ourselves or set ourselves up for all these things that, you know, we want to aspire to accomplish. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I let myself down. You know, like I told my family I was going to do this, right? Like this was going to be my shot. I was going to do it and it was going to be amazing. And then all of a sudden a week later it kind of fizzled out, right? And it's like time after time after time after time is like, okay, the first time I was like, all right, no big deal. Second time it comes through like, oh, you know what? That kind of sucked a little bit. Third time, like, well, you know what? My word really isn't worth a crap. And then my last time I was like, I'm not even going to tell myself that I'm going to do this because I know I'm going to let myself down, right? And so with all these things, you guys, is, is we talked about it a little bit yesterday and we talked about it basically for the last 31 days um, because yet again, all these things correspond together, right? Um, but it's really just starting small, right? Like start small, start simple, right? And Courtney's going to talk over the acronym of, a, of how we got to go about doing it. But really, you guys, it's starting, stall, starting small, start, starting simple. So that way you can bridge that gap between where you're starting and where you want to go. And that way you can build trust within yourself and understand that no matter what comes about, whether it's a quarantine, whether it's another pandemic, whether it's, um, you know, a birthday parties or a time of whatever, like you can trust that you are going to keep yourself on the path of moving in the direction that you want to, right? Like we're big on the aspect I, we're, of, you know, like, movement and exercise is just metaphors for our life, right? Like I can tell within five minutes of a person when they first come into our facility of how they deal with, you know, a workout or the things that we're putting them through, <laughs> uh, probably how they deal with stress and what the, what's going on in their life, despite whatever they're telling me is actually happening right like if you are if you get overwhelmed if you get ultra stressed out if you start you know panting and throwing a fit and everything else that probably means that's what's also going on in your life right and so these are these how you do one thing is also how you probably do everything else because it transcends across all these things so um you know next thing we're getting into is it's basic <laughs> so i want to say what brandon just said is that the other part of this and why i think we love crossfit so much is that you can train yourself inside of the gym of how you react outside of the gym, right? Like obviously you guys know I love meditation and breath work. You can, you can train your, your brain and your body that way, but you can also do it in a workout when you're like, okay, things aren't going well. How do I handle this, right? And then outside of that, you're like, okay, so everything fell apart in my workout today and I was able to keep it together and I can now actually do that when the world gets shut down, et cetera, right? So you hear us talk all the time about consistency and congruency in life and like all of this goes together, okay? So, so let's talk about basics. So first I wanna say, a lot of us, a lot of you may not trust yourself, but you do, it's not really at the forefront of your mind that you don't trust yourself, right? So let's talk about how we can, we can look at this. So we hear people all the time. They're like, well, I start working on something and then I self-sabotage or I don't have enough motivation or um, I feel like I'm in a battle with myself or I feel like I'm just at war with myself, right? So if you have these feelings, if you had those thoughts, ultimately what's really below that is that you don't trust yourself right and so when like maybe it's a program or, or something that you want to do an education that you want to get a relationship you want to be in whatever you you look at it and you're just like i can't do that right and so like 
the it, it's nothing to do with the program, the person, whatever. Like that underlying I can't do that is because you've created distrust with yourself by the actions in the past, right? And again, none of that is your fault, right? Go back and watch our video on Bitfar and it goes over like the gap between action and beliefs, right? And so so we know that. We know that we're taking action, we're shifting our beliefs, we're thinking about our thoughts and our feelings. This framework will actually help you create innate trust. Okay, so trust with yourself. So the first is boundaries, okay? We've talked about that. You have to have boundaries, not rules, okay? Not like I have to do X, Y, Z at two o'clock, four o'clock, six o'clock. I have to work out every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I take Thursdays off work Saturday, Sunday. Like boundaries of I move my body for at least 30 minutes a day, five times a week. I eat fruits and vegetables. I eat five times a day. I mostly eat things that are healthy for me, right? Like that's a boundary. Um, I meditate, I do breath work, I focus on myself. Like those are boundaries, right? They're not, they're not rules, okay? So first you have boundaries. Second, you have action, okay? You keep hearing us say this, like you are getting nowhere in the world if you don't take action, okay? But you can't just take action. And that's what a lot of us have tried before. It's like, well, I've done the action and then all of a sudden I can't do it anymore. And then you don't understand like why it's not working, okay? So boundaries, action. Um, the third one is surrender. And this is not something we've talked about, but surrender means surrender to the process, Surrender to the struggle, surrender to the pain, like surrender to what you're doing and stop trying to control it. Stop trying to create certainty around it and just be like, okay, this is the thing I'm doing and I'm going to surrender to the process and I'm going to be open to what it teaches me and I'm, I don't have rules so I can't fail, right? But surrender is really hard for a lot of us, especially right now. We talked about this a little bit. If your need for certainty is coming from a negative place where it's coming from control, um, or a not aligned place and you're feeling like you're trying to control everything, surrender is like the hardest thing to do because surrender means give up control. Surrender means you're open to whatever's happening and you're staying in alignment and you're moving towards it. Okay. So let yourself surrender to the process, surrender to all the feelings, surrender to whatever shows up for you. Okay. When you surrender, it means you release control and then your life will actually start to shift in the way you want it to go because you're no longer trying to like bottleneck it and it's expansive. Okay. You want to talk about that? No, I want to just touch on that a little bit. So we talked about this the, uh, yesterday, day before yesterday, when we were talking about relationships, right? Like surrender means you have to be in feminine energy, right? Like you have to be in receptive and open energy, right? And I think for a lot of us right now, it's there, because it's uncertainty, right? Like we were just talking about that of like being in creation, being in go mode, you know, for some of you guys of like, I'm going to start this because I want to get leaner after this, throughout this whole process, that's a sense of trying to create certainty and it, that's a masculine energy in order to do that. And in, sort of, in order to surrender, you also have to be open to, to be and being aware of what energy are you in? Because if you're constantly in max, ma, uh, masculine energy and attack mode and go mode, right? Like for um, some of us, when we're in that, well, for all of us, when we're in that energy, we don't, we're, 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 we're in go. We're, we're moving forward when I kind of, that puts blinders on and all of a sudden it's like, well, shit, I don't know why I'm doing what I'm doing, but I need to attack this. I need to go, right? I need, I need to go through all these things. And it's like, well, in order for you to be receptive and actually see, you have to allow yourself to get into a feminine energy. You have to allow yourself to get into n negative energy is kind of the wrong term for this a little bit, right? Like I think a wrong description of it because it's, it's not negative, but it's on the stance of there's positive and then negative, right? Like you can look at uh, masculine energy as positive. You can look at feminine as negative, not in a good or bad sense, but there's, there's two, um, they, there, you need both aspects of those to actually combine and mesh together. If you're always in one, you're going to have confliction and you're going to burn out on both of those. And you're also not going to see what you're actually doing and be receptive to it. Yeah. So, so what he means is like the yin and the yang, right? So like masculine energy, just super simple is like get things done. Um, be productive, that kind of thing. More feminine energy is open to receiving, surrendering, going with the flow. Like it's just a lot more flowy energy. And so if you want it like to surrender, first you have to surrender and then you have to be able to receive, right? Receive the messages, receive like what your body's telling you, receive um, the trust, receive all of those things. And so, I mean, I, I know, and I think a lot of people are in very different places right now. Like we're in like super go mode, um, which puts me in really masculine energy and that's my core energy. And I said to him last night, I said, I think part of my problem right now is that I haven't been doing enough of balancing my feminine energy. And that's why I don't feel as good as I was feeling. Right. And so this morning I legit picked a meditation off of YouTube. Um, and it like walks you through this thing. You go down these stairs, you open this door, there's grass and it takes you into a house. 
and the house is meeting your feminine energy. And I was like, oh, thank you universe. Cause I did not know what this meditation was about. I just picked one that like spoke to me and that's exactly what I needed to be in this morning. So like when you start to understand yourself and you start to understand all the things you can see that. Right. And so oh. surrendering to the process is hard, but you have to just do it and let yourself be in it. Uh, one more thing on that that might help kind of describe that a little bit is if you're familiar with archetypes, right? Like if you're feeling kind of on tilt, you're feeling kind of uneasy, you're feeling just kind of overly drawn on one side or the other. So I, there's Junjil archetypes. I like the, I like that description because there's four of those. Like Courtney has another one that has like 12. Um, but like for those, there's there are basically four archetypes that we all have within us, right? Like there's the warrior, there's a lover, there's the magician, there's the sovereign. And essentially they represent dis different aspects of us as human beings, right? But for a lot of us, if we get too much of one and that archetype is kind of overriding the system, we're going to feel uneasy, right? We need to have balance amongst those so they can talk and communicate and correspond efficiently, right? And so if you're in your warrior, essentially, which is constant action and constant go because of uncertainty or whatever, that might be overriding your other aspects. Now on, on a, um, on an aspect of being on a feminine aspect and receiving and being receptive, that would be your lover, right? Like that would be your lover, your energy, because in order to receive love, you have to be in receive from a feminine aspect because that's receiving, right? And so oftentimes you guys is yet again, what we're talking about is just being able to balance the aspects that we all have within us, right? Like I don't care who you are, we all have to have aspects of this as human beings. And so being aware of this can bring about a, a different understanding for yourself. Yeah. So surrender. Um, so basic, so boundaries, action, surrender. Uh, the next one is integrity, right? And I think, I think integrity is a very interesting one because sometimes when we say integrity, it's like doing the right thing at the right time. And, and, and yes, that is it. But like right now I want to talk about taking integral action towards the best version of yourself and who you want to be and where you're going, right? And so if you're like, I want to be a healthier version of me in 30 days. I want to like boost my immunity. I want to, I want to feel good. I want to, I want to do these things, right? If like, if you know what the best version of yourself is and you know what, like, you know, that's where you want to go, you have to be integral with the actions that you're doing, right? And so if you're like, well, I really want to be healthy. I want to be moving my body. I want to, you know, I want to be at like the, my maximum health and my best self. And then you don't move your body, you eat junk food all day, you drink every every night, you're doing drugs. Like, it, that's not integral with where you say you want to go, right? So you want to think about integrity of like, not only just doing what you say, but letting your actions be congruent with the version of you that you're moving towards or the move, version of you that you want to move towards. What I think with that, you guys, is also understanding that there's no perfection. Right, yeah. right. Like I think that's the part that I think sometimes we get kind of misskewed a little bit when we're talking about integrity. It's like, uh, sh I, I want to move myself in that direction, but shit, I had a chocolate chip cookie. So that means I'm not integral. Right. And so I think it's understanding that the, yet again, there are so many facets of you, right? Like you're not just a person that does exercise. You're not just a mom. You're not just a dad. You're not just a brother. You're not just a sister. You're not just an accountant, right? Like there's so many different aspects of you and it's being able to see as a full version of you, what does that version look like to be at its highest, best realm, right? And like for the part that I think we run into oftentimes where people are coming to us in the fitness space is, well, I want to lose 30 pounds, right? Like I want to get into better fitness. I want to do these things, but I want to be able to celebrate my child's birthday, right? And so if I'm not able to celebrate with my child's birthday, that means I'm not integral to the aspect of me wanting to get healthier and fitter and leaner. And by celebrating, you and, mean like but, eat cake. Yes. And so with with that, it's understanding that yes, there's multiple facets of that. Is Is by you celebrating that, is that allowing you to be in a higher realm of the highest, higher version of you as a parent, as, as a supportive, as, as that type of thing. Maybe that moment in time, that's your purpose. But on the grand scheme of things, looking at certain things of, okay, if this is what I want to create over here, but my, my overwhelming me, uh, majority of my actions on a day to day basis are actually moving me the other direction. That's what we're talking about as, as far as integral, it's not being perfect, right. right? Like I think that's the part that we run into with a lot of our, with, with all our clients that are high achievers is we always strive for more, right? Like I get to the next block. I want to look for the next thing. Right. And it's like, okay, that's great. But I want you to understand that perfection is not a standard. 
right? Like I, I always love a protector. It's a protector. I always love the fact that people have high standards for themselves, but perfection is not a standard, right? Like we think perfection is something until we see the next best thing. And all of a sudden that's more perfect. Right. And it's like, well, that's actually the lowest form of what we could hold ourselves to because it's not real, Mm -hmm. right? Like it's not realistic because it it just doesn't exist. And so we want to have standards for ourselves. We want to align with the things that we want to create in our life, but it's having a sense of reality of yet again, where our priorities are, what we want to create for ourselves. Is it alignment? Is it, is it falling within the things that I want to experience on a day to day basis, right? Is it falling into the last 31 days of what we've been doing and, and going through this? Yeah. So, uh, and the last one you guys is consistency. So the C is consistency. So if you follow us and what we do is shift, we have six C's. So we could put all six of these actually right here and it would make sense. But we want to talk about consistency, right? And so like Brandon said, like, it, it's consistently showing up for yourself, right? Not being perfect, not nailing, like not not following rules, not doing that, but like consistently paying attention to who do you have to be, how do you want to show up in this world, and then doing your best to do that every day, right? It's showing up consistently. If you guys have read The Compound Effect, um, if you haven't read The Compound Effect, go read it, right? But it's the, big, the biggest thing with that is that like consistency is key because you can go a million miles an hour for 30 days and then do nothing for 30 days and you're going to be worse off than you were, right? And so when you think about The Compound Effect and you think about why consistency is so important is that if you start here and one, like, one person's moving this much every day, the other person's actually moving away from where they were, right? And so all of a sudden in 30 days, like if, if everybody started here, those of us that have not been showing up for ourselves might be over here and those of us that have been might be over here, right? And there's a big gap. It's not here to here, but it's here to here. So it's consistently leaning into who do you want to be? How do you want to show up? How do like, how do you want to feel? What, what do you want to create in this world? And how do you want to feel in the midst of it, right? And when you can nail consistency, and just do it day in and day out and learn from the things that didn't go the way you wanted them to and restructure the boundaries and just stay with integrity and stay in alignment and stay focused on like that energy and, and, and who you want to be, everything will start to change and you will start to trust yourself, right? And what I love about this framework is that so many people don't trust themselves because they start they start everything with rules. And like, you're always going to fail at those eventually, like you will break the rule, right? And so when you start it with a system that you literally cannot fail at, you can only learn and grow from, you will start to trust yourself. And you're like, oh, I can do this. And none of that was my fault. It wasn't that I didn't have motivation. It was none of those things. And then you're like, okay, I can trust myself. I can do what I, what I said I wanted to do. And then you start to feel better, which builds trust which builds more action and then you get the spiral upward and all of a sudden it's flowy and it's easy and it's simple right and so it's super simple you just have to start applying these um if you don't know how to like if if you struggle with this you're like what's a great concept but i can't actually do it reach out to us right if you're like "I, i can't set boundaries or i'm struggling with setting boundaries like i don't know what action i should be taking i don't know how to surrender if you don't know how to surrender Show up tomorrow, 7 a.m. I will take you through a breathwork course. Breathwork will make you surrender. It's the most beautiful, amazing thing ever. So 7 a.m., it's free, it's donation-based, it's on Zoom. It is the most healing thing you can do for yourself. And it will get you into the feeling of what surrender is, right? Um, You probably know what integrity is, but if you don't know what the best aligned version of yourself is, let us know. Like, we'll help you walk you through this, you guys. But when you can get a handle on this and you can start applying it consistently, your consistently, your life will change massively between now and six weeks from now. Well, and this is how you create long-term success, right? Like, and sustainable success, right? Like, I think that's the other part that we've run into for 20 years of working with people of like, I'm going to do this thing for the next 60 days. I'm going to get all these life-changing things. And then, you know, 40 years down the, down the road, I'm going to be able to look at my life talents at that one time in that 40 days, I was happy. I was successful. I got all these things that it was right. And so our goal, you guys, is to create long-term sustainable success and happiness, mm-hmm. right? Like to me, it's what you can achieve all you want, but if you're not happy and at the same time, you're tearing other people around you down, I've been there. I've done that. And I can speak from my own experience on there. Like that's not, that's not achievement right like that's actually going the opposite direction of that and so with this you guys it's being able to create a system being able to actually have systematic things that we can actually put into play that we can actually see long-term sustained success and you get to enjoy it right like ultimately you get to enjoy it which in turn means the other people around you get to enjoy it at the same time right like it, it relinquishes so much of the burden of stress and overwhelm and expectation and all the other things that demolish progress, right? Because if you can experience progress, 
right? Like that's all we need to do. All we need to do is experience progress and we will continue moving forth. But when we start to have expectations, comparison, all these other things that we are taught to do um, based off of realities that aren't even ours, right? Like if we can, if we can shift and move those things away, then you get to be happy. Then you get to actually see that you can do this for the next duration of your life, not just for the next 30 days, 20 days, or whatever challenge aspects that come across your board for the next, you know, six weeks. Yeah. And I keep seeing that like progress or uh, focus on progress, not perfection, but, and I love that, but I also think you have to decide what, what does progress mean, right? Like it's, I, I used to love that. I was like, focus on progress, not perfection. And then the other thing we say is, progress is not your business. <laughs> so like, um, understanding that progress could mean showing up for yourself. It could mean actually feeling what's going on. It could mean just awareness, right? Awareness can be an amazing amount of progress, um, that gets you away from perfection. So it's, again, it's leaning in, it's peeling back the layers. Um, if some of the stuff didn't make sense to you guys, go back on my page. You'll see the bit far thing. You'll see what we've talked about. Like these go in some sequence of order. So if this didn't land with you and you're like, that's really interesting, but I don't understand it. Go back and watch the other videos. Shoot us any questions you guys have. Um, I hope you're having an amazing Friday. We've got some sunshine back in Colorado. So um, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks, y'all.